now coming to the pre clamp period here you have to maintain the blood pressure at baseline as much as possible you should not allow it to go down or become too high maintain a carbon dioxide in the normal limit of 35 to 40 mm of mercury you adjust the ventilatory parameters accordingly then maintain the maximum saturation of around 98 to 100 percent heparin is usually given prior to cross clamping you maintain a act of 200 to 250 seconds or double the baseline value the baseline is 140 so double the value will be around 280 second normally you give around 100 units per kg don't forget to recheck the act after 30 minutes and particularly after the clamp here you can see the internal carotid artery clamp external carotid artery clamp and the common carotid artery clamp and the carotid is cut to open and in open cases whenever you need to give cerebral protection they can place the shunt inside the carotid artery during cross clamp the most important thing is to maintain your cardiovascular hemodynamics here the aim is to maintain the mean arterial pressure or baseline or at a higher value this is important to promote the collateral perfusion to the brain during clamping normally it is maintained at a level of 90 to 110 mm of mercury though the level might vary on various patient factors to get this blood pressure to at a higher level you use vasoconstrictor like metoraminol or phenylephrine boluses sometime to reduce the pressure you use lebetalol or nitroglycerin infusion and another important thing during cross clamp is you have to augment the circulation towards neuro monitoring your neuro monitoring should be done and as i said earlier to augment the collateral blood flow you use vasopressor and sometimes you give lot of volumes to get the pressure up and increase the collateral blood flow to the carotid circulation and whenever you manipulate the barrier receptor you can anticipate bradycardia and hypotension which should be tackled immediately coming during the clamp release there can be reflex bradycardia and severe vasodilatation which causes hypotension another important thing is when you release a cramp hypertension should be generally avoided this is to avoid the wall stress on the delicate arterial suture line if a blood pressure is going to be high after the cramp release this suture might give way and hematoma might develop and this carotid artery hematoma might compress the carotid artery as well as the airway and if everything is okay reverse the heparin with protamin after unclamping and maintain the normalization of activated clotting time post clamp there can be hyperperfusion to the carotid circulation post perfusion hyperemia can develop in the brain and the patient might be slightly irritable sometimes or an emboli the plaque might be embolized during the surgery and develop a internal carotid artery thrombosis leading to stroke persistent hypertension can happen due to denervation of baroreceptors and they can be post operative neck hematoma